It's a night of mixed emotions for all of us here at CBS2. We're so excited for Paul Major's next stage of life after announcing his retirement. But we're also sad to know he won't be here with us every night. And maybe most of all, we're proud of his courage in opening up about a very personal aspect of his life. I talked to him about all of it today. You have something really important that um, you want to talk about. You're sure. retiring. I am retiring. Yes. Yes. And you've been away for a while. I have been away. And the viewers have been wondering uh, where I've been. That's something that's very important to me. For Paul, the journey to this moment, a pivotal life decision, has been years in the making. Now to LAX, where travelers are getting used to some controversial new changes tonight. Paul joined CBS2 News in 2004 and became a reliable figure in Southern California news. You come to us from the Twin Cities area. Mm -hmm. Welcome here. aboard, my friend. Over the past 13 years, he's guided CBS2 News viewers through some of the biggest stories. There's investigators are still at the grim scene in Seal Beach tonight. So Both in the studio and on location. Good morning from Rome, Susie and Rob. It's 7 a.m. on a Monday morning, a chilly and damp day. Paul recently took time off to concentrate on himself and his health. Um, I've gone through treatment for um, alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, thanks to having a great family, not only my immediate family, but my extended family, all my brothers and my sister, mm -hmm. and having great friends, um, I got help. That's wonderful. And I needed help. Paul says he spent that time off in a treatment center, getting sober and learning about alcoholism. Now he says he has clarity and realizes that it's time to step away from the news. So many people wait for so long to retire, and there are no guarantees. God doesn't tell you that, you know, hey, you've got until the age of 83, 85, 86, 88, for that matter, 70. So you know um, when it's time. Yeah, it's my time. His yeah, time, time, not only for self-reflection, but also perhaps to help others who are struggling with addiction. I would sit and cry asking God to help me, and yet I couldn't pick up the phone. And I finally got help from, as I said, from friends and family. And um, if you're out there and you're suffering with whatever the addiction is, there is help out there. And all, all you have to do is just speak to someone, speak to one person, and that one person may be able to reach out and, and give you a hand and lift you up and help you. So how's it going? Great, it's going great. You look great. Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I feel great. I feel absolutely wonderful. I you really look do. absolutely thanks, wonderful. Thanks. And I personally miss that smile. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Obviously, Thanks. and the wit and everything else that goes with it. Just like CBS2 viewers, we all came to rely on Paul during times of tragedy. If you're just joining us, we've uh, interrupted programming here for breaking news. Uh, Metrolink train has collided with a freight train. The first time Paul and I anchored together was in 2008, the afternoon of the tragic Metrolink crash in Chatsworth. We were pretty emotional, but. We you know, both were. We got through it. You recall this? That when, um, because we were first on the scene. Yes. Sky, Sky 2 was first on the scene as it approached that mangled wreckage. We Do you recall that we didn't understand what we were looking at? No. From tragedies like the Chatsworth crash was, to devastating uh, wildfires uh, and even uh, historic uh, elections, you name it, Paul's been there for the stories that impacted our region and the people he reported in turn impacted him. There's another story that you did that you were so moved by this. It was a story involving a transgender teen. Did you feel you could bring it up and speak to somebody about it? I very quickly decided that if I wanted to survive or live at all, I couldn't ever talk about it. Very mature for his age. Obviously had gone through a lot in his life and uh, was just a fascinating young man. In 2014, Paul traveled to San Francisco to interview singer Linda Ronstadt about her struggle with Parkinson's disease and in classic Paul style, found a way to make her laugh. I was angry at Jerry Brown for a long time. <laughs> and that's because you were supposed to be my girlfriend. I see. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that you were singing Blue Bayou to me. Okay, something that was really funny that I know you enjoyed because you talked about it forever. The kings of comedy. Who's the funniest? <laughs> We're all the most modest. These are notable people who write comedy, produce comedy, did comedy. And walking in there and sitting at that table 
was one of those deals where, which I find myself doing often in life. <laughs> As his time with CBS2 comes to an end, Paul has a message for the viewers who tuned in every night. You know, I would just say um, thank you for letting you and me come into their homes, you know, at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. I think we work very well together, and I really mean that. If I have to end a career at some point in time, I'm glad I ended it with you here. I'm so, you don't know how that makes me feel, because it's been, it has been one heck of a ride. Yeah. So, um, good on you. Thank you. And, I appreciate um, that. Oh, Oops. Knock over the set. Oh, I love you, too. As for his immediate plans for the future, Paul says the most important thing is to work on his sobriety. He also plans to spend more time with his family and traveling with his lovely wife, Kathy. He's a cool guy. Isn't yeah. he a cool guy? So cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, my God. I'll, I'll miss our failed practical jokes. We were, we were, roommates. <laughs> we were roommates in the newsroom. Yes, they, were they have a to prank red each velvet other. rope that yeah. sort of leads to where they sit. And the anchor line. You and first. The thing, that I, the thing that I learned from him, he's a great professional, it was more of a personal thing. And the pure and true love he has for his wife. There's no yeah. question. And he, as he would and say, happy wife. Happy, Happy life. life. Yeah. Smart man. Yeah, yeah. smart man. Yeah, because, and he would say, Jim, there's still some hope for you. <laughs> and I'm really going to, he was like my big brother. As Pat knows, oh him and goodness. I would play jokes on each other. Yes. We would wait for 15 minutes so we could scare one another with oh, the eye in the dark. Remember everything. But you know, most importantly, we yeah. want to. Yeah. He's wish still going to be best, around. My friend. Yeah. Keep Happy the faith, trails buddy. to you. Keep the faith. Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah.